Hey, I'm Don Kiske. Thanks for checking out the Whitetail Freaks YouTube channel. Make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any new weekly content. This week. One buck in particular that I knew I wanted now was one that Chase had missed earlier on that top plot. It's late December, and the Landrys have wrapped up their annual Candyland trip and headed home. But Don still has his muzzle loader tag with redemption on his mind. This is a buck that I had a, a lot of history to. I can take him through back to 2013. Don is on a mission, and his mission not only involves a ton of history, but it involves taking out a buck that's already escaped death once and is well overdue for the harvest. It's over. First day of muzzleloader season. And that's it. That's all she wrote. CVA 50 caliber with my Nikon inline XR scope. Should be right on the money, but we shoot it every year no matter what. Just to make sure. Actually, today I'm shooting the Monoflex. Monoflex Hornady 250 grain. It's always been a great bullet for us, so. Fire in a hole. Top of the target. It's a clean gun, so it's dead perfect in line, but it's too high. So therefore, I have to clean it again. Don Kiske is a man of many virtues. Being a farmer is one reason why his work ethic and professionalism are a top priority. And making sure his weapons don't miss or leave an animal injured are just part of the ritual. All righty. Second shot. As far, as far as target practice goes, you know, we're shooting all year long. It never stops. If, if you do stop, you you feel like you get rusty and, and whatever. But yeah, it's all the way through the year, 365 days a year, we try to practice. That doesn't mean we're always going to hit everything, but it means we practice all year long. Don and Candy made target practice all year long. But on this day, Don has a good reason. It's late December in Iowa and Don's been busy entertaining guests in Candyland. So to better the odds that he won't eat a tag, Don will prepare. The good news is that he has a specific buck in mind and knows exactly where to look for him. There we go. Boom, looks like it's dead on at that time. Well, just got the old gun sighted in, getting ready to head out. First day of late muzzleloader season here in Iowa. We're after the big eight tonight. Two nights in a row, he was at the Ranch King, so we get to stand a really good chance of seeing him. The only problem is it was like zero for the last two nights, and tonight it's warmed up a bunch, like 27. But hopefully he'll still come in. Give my coat a shot of scent killer here real quick. I need all the help I can get. Between scent lock and scent killer, scent control is usually not a problem. But with the warm weather Iowa's had over the last couple years, it's become a bit more concerning. So Don's very liberal when spraying down. Like the last couple years, you know, we've been having hot years. We've been really battling the heat, and that's really come to plague us, especially during late muzzleloader season. When you've been hunting as long as Don Kiske, discovering the secrets of the game becomes second nature. But when it comes to staying scent free, there really are no secrets. Scent Lock has been the leader, in my opinion, of the odor eliminating technology. Uh, it's always worked great for Candy and I. In combination with wearing the complete system of Scent Lock, B3, 
being as super clean, doing everything you can to your ability, it does work and you can get by with a ton more than if you didn't use it. Another product we always use is Wildlife Research. That's where it starts at, in the shower. You gotta be clean all the way through, store your clothes right, spray down, and if you do everything right, there's no doubt about it, it's gonna help you. And um, it's brought a lot of success to Canyon over the years. Well, we're getting the uh, cool camera put on my gun that we've been using all year this year. Just gives you a little bit of added confidence. You know, we got the main camera, but you never know, something could happen to mini card, camera could, who knows what. Plus, it's just a cool look. You know, for me, Tacticam has brought a whole new angle to filming these hunts. All of a sudden now, on your bow or on your guns, you've got this camera sitting on the end of it. You're catching everything as it happens. You can zoom it in to five times zoom, or you can have the standard backed off view. Tremendously good footage and incredible audio. That's the thing that blew me away, how good the audio is on them little cameras. Now, for this year, they also got a selfie cam, I call it. It points back at you. It's a wide-angle lens. It catches all the action behind us. It just makes our job that much easier filming these hunts. So there you go, We've got both of our tactic cams mounted. This one's front facing, catching all the action, and this one's catching all the action back. Pretty easy, one click, she powers up, front light will be blinking green. Now we're recording. If you wanna pause it, just touch it one time, go solid, turn it off, hold it down, and she powers off. Pretty simple. So we're ready to roll. Got everything sprayed down. Tactic cams are on. I gotta find my wings and we're off to kill a big buck. Here we go, boys. Late muzzleloader season is finally here. The Landry's just left two days ago. They uh, killed three for three on the second to last day of the season, so. Three great bucks. But now late muzzler season's here. And the buck we're after tonight is actually a buck that Chase missed about a half a mile or quarter of a mile on a different food plot. Okay, you ready? I hope right now. Come in. He just shot, evidently, just right underneath it, blue dirt up on the other side. And um, just a stud of, stud of a deer, a big eight pointer that I can take back for like two or three years. Used to be a 10. Then he had a goofed up side last year. I finally went back to just a big eight. But this is the biggest he's been. Uh, ever in his life, so he's number one on our hit list tonight. He's a stud of an eight, but uh, got the OCVA. Just actually shot it today to, to verify. I got a cap it yet. But it uh, first shot was a little high, so I brought her down. We're about an inch high at 100 yards, which should be good to go. Shooting the Hornady 250 grain monoflex. And as you can tell, I got cameras everywhere. Got the tactic cams. That one's pointing back at me, and this is pointing forward. It's kind of cool. Oops, don't want that. Anyway, if it all works out, he should come out tonight. And we'll have a great buck on the ground, so. A lot of deer pour into the field on this warm December afternoon, but none of them are shooters. None of them are mature. And none of them are the big eight. See more deer back there. A couple big bodies back in the back. You see the ones I'm looking at? Yeah, I got them. I see what you're talking about. As the deer continue to flow out of the woods, they go from smaller to bigger, and Don starts to get excited. His instincts are about to show true once again. That's quite possibly the big eight right there. I can't quite tell. That's a big Frank deer right there. I think that's him. I think that's our eight coming. I had corn and soybeans out in front of me. 
bucks like always, they started pouring out of the timber, you know, about dark. And I looked back in there, uh, way back in the timber, I could see a big rack coming. And I really started concentrating on this. I told Ken, I said, man, I think that's the big eight back there. He's slowly walking through the timber, getting closer and closer to the plot. And uh, man, I was really getting pumped. I said, we're gonna kill this deer. Gosh, I can't see. Yeah, I know. It's him, I see the face. See, something on yeah, I see the black spot. That, that's him. That's for sure. It's big eight. Having patience while hunting is a must, especially when the very buck you're after is taking his time getting into range. He's gonna come in. He's gonna come in, baby. Let me get my chair and scoot it up some. You got him? Yeah. Well, yo, come on in, big boy. Don wants this buck bad, and for good reason. Not only did Chase Landry miss him a few days prior, but Don balked at an opportunity in this same field at the end of last season. She gives some pretty stuff him walking through there. Is he gonna be a good deer next year? Oh yeah. He's a beauty. When the big eight showed up last year, he wasted no time and walked straight to the beans, well within range of the CBA. But Don felt that even at the ripe age of five, this buck could use one more year. He's right on the other side of the weeds right there. He's walking right. You see him? Yeah, I see him. Way, way right or just kind of right? No, he's, he's on the weeds. He's still going right. He's walking in the grass, right? Yeah, if he walks too far right, I'm gonna have to reevaluate my windows here. I think I'm gonna take him out the side window now instead. He's gonna walk too far to the right. Still had good daylight. He walks out of the timber, getting ready into the field, walks onto the plot. I'm trying to get everything ready, and Candy's getting everything ready, turning our tactic cams on. Let's let him get close as we can.
The rest of the deer were standing at 110 yards. That's right where he walked out to. And I told Canny, as soon as he gives me a broadside shot, I'm taking this buck. That buck moves, I'm gonna take him. Gotta take another step. Okay, to take it right there. All right, here we go, you ready? I think we just killed a big eight. He's a six to seven year old deer. And um, we had a good encounter, or chased it with him, and should have had him killed during shotgun season. Somehow, just shot just underneath him. Thank thankfully, he did for me. <laughs> anyway, Chase killed a big one later on, but uh, it's over. First day of muzzleloader muzzle season, and that's it. Don Kiske has done it again. He has shown how he manages his farms and keeps track of his deer for years. We want to put it, look at it, perfect double arm shot, so CBA is a smoking gun now. The Big 8 is a buck that through many trail picks and encounters has shown just how much a buck can change in a few short years. But in his final year, he'll score a respectable 157 inches and take the number nine position in Freaktown's 2016 Top 10 Buck Down. It all worked out tonight. Big eight hit the ground. Beautiful shot, had a 110 yard shot with a 50, 50 caliber CVA. And uh, just sighted it in today, it was dead on at 100 yards, so we knew you could make the shot. Look at them beams. Full wrap round, excellent twos, excellent threes. Have such a great history to this deer. He's at least six, maybe seven years old. But like for the last three years, he went from a 10 to a nine, to all screwed up last year, and this was his best rack ever. Has an eight pointer, he scored better this year than he ever did. So, all worked out. Chase Landry, sorry buddy, <laughs> I got your buck you missed the other night. Chase actually missed his buck three or four days ago. He killed a stud, so it doesn't matter, but uh, he shot just underneath him, and now we'll be able to see where exactly he might have clipped him at if he clipped hair or just missed totally. Nonetheless, I'm on the board. All right. There we go. Beautiful. What the cat was that? Well, <laughs> I did put one on it. You guys forgot to remind me. 